Do you know what? It seems like everyone is talking about chromosomes right now, but when I listen to them, they don't actually seem to be talking about genetics. They seem to be talking about other things. So let's actually talk about chromosomes. Now, I'm one of those people who thinks genetics is going to be super important in medicine because to me, studying the information in someone's DNA can help us understand the specific genetic drivers behind their condition. And in some cases, this information can help us identify better treatments for someone. So you'd think, all this talk about chromosomes should make me really happy because I usually love talking about chromosomes, be it spectral carrier typing or epigenetic silencing. Normally, if it involves chromosomes, I'm down to talk about it. But it seems like a lot of the people who are bringing up chromosomes don't actually want to talk about genetics at all. It's almost like they're only talking about chromosomes so they can tell other people what to think. So let's actually talk about chromosomes. Now, chromosomes are great. They're these super long bits of DNA. And for people, all the DNA we need to make us us is split up across 23 chromosomes. People normally have two pairs of each, but sometimes people can have a little more or a little less. But when listening to the people talking about chromosomes, it seems like they're only really wanting to talk about one set of them. The sex chromosomes. Can I say that on YouTube? Is this going to be the lost episode? The sex chromosomes are given that name because they're involved in determining someone's reproductive anatomy. You know, their sex organs. As well as the secondary sex characteristics people develop. And when people usually talk about the sex chromosomes, they usually say something like, well, you know, girls have two X chromosomes and boys have one X and one Y chromosome. And much like electrons in the Bohr model of the atom, this too is a bit of an oversimplification. Because... Even if you want to take all the spicy stuff out of the conversation, we know things aren't necessarily that simple. We know that there's a lot of happy people out there with different combinations of sex chromosomes. Some people with a penis have an extra Y chromosome, while others have an extra X. Likewise, some people with a vulva have three X chromosomes, while others only have a single one. In the grand scheme of things, these differences are pretty common. There are more people with different combinations of sex chromosomes than people who live in the Netherlands and New Zealand combined. And it doesn't matter who you are. You could enjoy rugby union or rugby league. You could have wild hair or wild solutions to wheat production quotas. You could be passionate about supply side economics or reliving your glory days at Stereosonic. Anyone could have one of these chromosomal differences. And that's okay. These differences are a completely natural occurrence. And they just highlight how challenging using chromosomes as a mechanism for sex development can be. These differences are literally just part of life. These chromosomal differences aren't the only thing that can impact the development of our reproductive organs. And sometimes, people can have genetic differences that aren't visible on the chromosome level. And one gene that's hard to see on the chromosome level that plays an important role in these processes is SRY. SRY is one of the rare genes that's unique to the Y chromosome. As a transcription factor, SRY's job is to switch on other genes and when SRY switches on another gene called SOX9, it sets up a chain reaction that transforms undifferentiated tissue and eventually produces the organs we typically associate with this wiggly crew. Sometimes, people can have a Y chromosome with a version of SRY that doesn't get activated at the standard time point, or doesn't function as expected, or one of the genes that interacts with SRY is MIA. And in these scenarios, the chain reaction doesn't start, and in the absence of these signals, the undifferentiated tissue goes down a different path, meaning that some people with an X and a Y chromosome have a vulva. And again, it's important to point out that people with different versions of SRY go on to live happy and fulfilled lives. SRY does its job in the very early days of development, like its work is already done before some people even realize they're pregnant. Even as a scientist who spends their entire day thinking about genes, the thing that really gets me is how switching on a single gene for such a short period of time can produce outcomes that can ripple out over someone's entire lifetime. Now, the thing is, is that we have more genes than SRY. In fact, we're made up of tens of thousands of other genes, all interacting with each other and doing all the cool stuff they do. Some of these genes make hormones, and some of these genes regulate hormones, and a whole bunch of them do jobs we haven't even figured out yet. So I wonder... Over a lifetime of experiences and adventures, how might our genes 
interact and affect traits that are infinitely more complex than organ development, like consciousness or how we see ourselves or how we see others. A lot of the people making a lot of noise about chromosomes say things like, well, you can't change your chromosomes, which very broadly speaking is kind of true. But the thing is, a lot of the stuff we associate with chromosomes do change. And we know this because we see people using hormone replacement therapy later in life. We see people boost their testosterone levels for gym gains, and we see other people get surgery to change their secondary sex characteristics. But putting all this aside, we might not be able to choose our chromosomes, but we can choose how we treat people. And I think making sure we're there for people who might be struggling when their chromosomes don't match what we think people with that set of chromosomes normally do is a pretty important thing. Because judging people on their chromosomes or the DNA inside those chromosomes has led to some of the worst things we've ever done. So in this beautifully complex world of ours, I think the least we can do is acknowledge this complexity as a normal part of life and try to support each other when we need it. I think Carl Sagan said it best. For small creatures such as we, the vastness of the universe is bearable only through love. Thanks for watching, and please remember to be cool to one another. Thank you.